Hello. I just thought it would be a good opportunity to review the process of importing feeds from standard XMLs and looking at resampling. So today we have NDS open, and what we will do is we've already downloaded what we call a merged file from one of the major websites, uh, one of the feed laboratories. So I'm going to go import, and then I'm going to import the feed analysis, and it comes up to where I have usually kept those, and it's saying standard XML or XML file here. I have different options that I can look at here, but I've just routinely thrown mine into the um, downloads area, and so here's one for today. And so what I need to do is if I'm importing a feed analysis from the lab in the standard XML format, it needs to be in that format. So I can change the file type here if I need to, but the standard XML is what I'm using or what I'm needing, and here it loads that right there for me. So what I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to clone this during import, which I, means I'm going to put these analysis over the top of a known um, library feed so that all my rates and everything, anything that's not being tested for and reported in the analysis will be stuck into on top of that template. I'm going to choose to edit feeds during the info, during the import, which means I can change the name of it. I could add the farm name, but I'm going to choose to open the feeds in the feed tab. I could also use the sample ID from the lab to help generate an ingredient code or set a sample date. I might try this one. I, you know, just another feature there that I haven't been using. So what I'm going to do is these two feeds are the ones that were analyzed. It's in a merged sample. Most of the uh, labs, the websites will do that. So I'm going to go ahead, shows they're both clicked. I'm going to hit proceed. It's coming from Dairyland Labs today. I did this once, but I'm going to proceed anyway. And what I'm going to do from here, so it loads up that sample and it says here is the the sample name that it was on the bag here's the id code from the lab what i could do is i could go in and use either the cncps feed library or the rumen library if i click on cncps then it gives me the cncps library values and then i can load one of all my sample over the top of this. So if you look, we've got a haylage, I know it's an alfalfa, 37.5 and a 20 crude protein. With the pre-selection tab clicked right here, it's going through the list and finding those samples that would be most indicative of what I'm seeing here. So here's some alfalfa silages, and I can hover over here and see that one is a 43 NDF with a starch of 18. I can scroll down here and say that's a 43, 18 also. There's some green chops. There's some silages up here. Here's the alfalfa silage 2037, which would hit my number pretty close because I'm going to load this. So this. 37.5 will override this alfalfa silage 37. So any value that's in here will override that. So I can do that and quickly click here, and then that would come over the top of this with just a proceed. But what I'm doing is I'm resampling something I've already looked at, so what I want to do is go to the resample button and go to the farm and click proceed. And here are the samples listed for that farm. So according to the date and the last changed up here, I can see there was a 215 halage, but here's the March 
first one. And what I can do is click on that. And this is the resampling function. So I resampled, click resample. I chose, I want to resample from this farm. Now I've resampled this forage. And from here, if I do nothing, this sample will override what else, whatever is saved in the program. So then this 37.6 would become a 37.5, 21.17 would become 20.68, and I can do things easily there. So the interesting part is really trying to figure out if I want to average these, Instead of just override, I can click Enable Moving Average. And then from there, I can go to Samples here, and I can see that I now have four samples from this haylage. And I can look down through there and look at these samples and say, okay, here's the first sample was 40 dry matter going to 38.5. Here's the NDFs on all of those samples. Crude proteins fluctuated a little bit. And what I can do is I can choose to use different numbers of samples and different met methods of averaging these. So what I might do for the, for the demonstration here is move this over slightly. And so now what I might do is choose four samples doing a simple average across these four samples. This is a new bunker they've started. So what I'm doing is showing the last four samples, so once a week, so this is a month of data. And so I can see what those look like. Now it's taking 25% of this, 25% of that, 25 and 25, and that would give me a simple moving average over these four samples. Now, if this was an upright silo or something, you know, or a small bunker, small drive over pile, it may change as it goes, as it feeds through. This is a rather large uh, pile, so I would use the simple. But if it was a tower silo, upright, I may choose an exponential. So the exponential gives me the most weight on the last sample. As you can see, it'd be 53, 26, 13, and 6 in the use of these samples giving me this average. And so it, it brings the weight of each analysis in a exponential factor, uh, exponential um, process. So again, 53, 26, 13. If I chose a weighted, the weighted is more of a straight line, giving me 40%, 30%, 20, and 10. So this is all set up as the user wants to look at it. And it changes the number slightly. So from 37.6 to, you know, uh, didn't change it all that much right there. But, um, you know, the average right here, excuse me, 37.6, if we did an exponential, it changes it slightly. We have four samples that are very tight, and so not much change. But if you were getting a variance, you can decide how to, how to manipulate your samples. I'm going to go with a simple. And then if I chose only three samples, but this... Let's say this looked to me like an outlier. I can uncheck this, and now it's using the, these three samples for my average. And I'm going to go ahead and, and include, let me take a quick look, 37, 37, 30. I, I'm going to use all four of them and use this new pile. Um, you know, I can look down here at my my NDFDs, my 12, 30, 120, 240. Hopefully this is reflective of this silage is getting a little better. So now when I proceed, so I've chosen this and um, 
I'll show you some more of, of these functions as we do the next one. But I'm going to go ahead and choose the moving average of the last four in a simple. And so when I hit proceed, we chose this edit feeds during feed info during import. So what I want to always do, I probably should save this. Whoops. Um, I should probably save save this. And what I've been tending to do is just put the date on it so none of my dairymen get um, confused. So, and then what I can do then is this will save this as part of that, the name of that halage. And so we will save that. I chose to open that sample. So from here, I can look at constant calculations and look at, you know, the fiber fractions. I can even go to the NDF digestibility and look through some of these values if I want. From here, I can make sure the dairy was 38.5 on dry matter. Make a quick change here. Here is the samples that you looked at and were looking at. So there's those four samples written right down here. In the nutrient analysis, you will see this patchwork quilt thing here. So I did change that that analysis slightly. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go up there and save. Uh, I changed the dry matter on that so it didn't change the the one in my ration. So now it's pulling up the next one. We ask for that merge sample. So now it's going right to this second one, the corn silage. And so what I'm going to do is go over here. And if I wanted to and say, hey, wait a minute, I want to go back to cloning because this is the first sample off of something. You know, the, the system, I chose the first forage sample to say this was a resample. So it's assuming I resampled this second one from the same farm, but I can switch back to cloning right here. And then it is looking at all these corn silages that it's pre-selecting from the CNCPS feed library. If I wanted to and say, give me the ones from the rumen feed library, here are two that it pre-selected. Now, if I choose, I don't want pre-selection, I want to choose my own, then I do need to type in corn, and here's my silages, looking at these feeds. It's deciding that it is a forage, so I could even change this to concentrate if I wanted. But I can change this from the CNCPS. So if I went back here, now we're in CNCPS feed library. Now we're in the rumen feed library then I can pre-select, you know, use the pre-selection and let it select, you know, which is just quicker than going down through the list on a lot of times. But if I go back to my resample and I choose the same dairy and proceed, then it will load all those samples in here. Here's the last one I was working on. And let's go look at this. Again, the same thing. It's showing me five samples. And from here, again, if this is unclicked, what it's doing is just going to overload my sample to my saved if I hit proceed. If I say moving, then I have all of these different scenarios that I can apply to different samples. Now, what's interesting is I've sampled this pile 13 times of corn silage but I only want to use the last five and I probably will go down to four because what I want to use is, is the last month's data. The farm samples weekly sends it in. I get the results back and I can look through. And so I'm going to do the last four in a simple, which is 25, 25, 25, which gives me an opportunity to look at this and say, okay, this last sample was a 30 NDF, and the starch was 38. So as I scroll down through here, 
these last two starches on these forages were very high and the two the last two NDFs are very low. So if I compare that to the other two samples that are historical, it looks like I'm getting a whole lot more corn and a less fiber in this. So this would, I usually take a snapshot of this and send it to the dairy and say, hey, is our silage changing much? We had that discussion last week. He said, no, I'm pulling it out. We're getting back to better silage into this pile. So what I might do is use that either the weighted or I might even go exponential on this to try and figure out, you know, are my cows really seeing this higher um, starch and lower NDF? I think what I'm going to do is go to this weighted sample for now, make another phone call to the manager at the dairy, have this discussion again, and then, you know, we can walk through that together. So, you know, historically I was using the, you know, about a 33 starch. Now we're going to, you know, 36 and a half. And so as we go up through there, I'm going to choose on this sample to do a weighted moving average of the last four samples. And again, I don't trust the seven hour starch D. I want to fill my own number in there. So I will unclick that. I could unclick any value I didn't agree with. The dairy says they're running about a 35 dry matter. So what happens when I'm opening that sample, I can make that change right there. So proceed. There's my sample. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to put this down here so I know what I've done. But up here, I definitely need to take that off. My dairymen always ask, what does that mean behind that sample? So I've learned not to confuse them. So there's the last sample date. Here's what I did with a retest one. And so now I can save this. And here is the sample. I would bet definitely first just change this back to 35. And then I can look at the constant calculations and see that I have chosen to put a 25 KD on the starch. But interesting, just looking through fiber digestion, fast pool, slow pool on this sample and then do a save. If I do, again, here's the samples, all of those samples for our um, our farm and our, you know, what is really interesting is these NDFs are right on top of each other, but the start of that pile was nowhere near the corn pile or the representative of the corn that we're seeing now at, you know, 38 and 39 starch. And so, we're going to use these last four samples. From here, I could even say, hey, I, don't, I want to maybe go to three of these samples and use that in that weighted configuration, which would even increase my starch and lower my NDF a little more. So you have that option here. When you confirm it here, it will confirm it for the forage. And so now I am, oops, uh, now it's going to go ahead and give me a, a weighted average of those three. So again, just going through that and looking at it, um, figuring out how we do, how we work with the resampling features. So with that, I just wanted to show how those all work. And again, this will show me that those samples are now saved in there and I've completed and that's my resampling function. Thanks.